500, 750 million. So there are many, many people making a million dollars a year who might only be 30, 31. So hey guys, this pandemic has affected us so badly, whether we are from IIT, MIT, Harvard, irrespective, a lot of students are losing the jobs and the number is probably around 35 million in the US. So that's why we have ex-Google, ex-Facebook and ex-Microsoft engineer who will be sharing his real life career tips. But first, I want to recommend you one of the best programming or software engineering courses provided by Educative. So whether you have a laptop or don't have a laptop, now you can finally read, learn and compile and execute code just with the help of your smartphone because this platform has a terminal inbuilt. And not only this, my favorite part of Educative platform is its system design interview course, which I'm still finishing up, which gives in-depth insights to how to design YouTube, Netflix, Dropbox, Instagram, etc. And this course is brought to you by the engineers who have 10 plus years of experience at FANG as well. So definitely try it out and the link will be in the description below. So hey guys, it's an honor to introduce an ex-Google, ex-Facebook and ex-Microsoft engineer all three at once. It's like meeting a celebrity for me. So hi Nick, can you please introduce yourself? Hi Herner, thanks for having me. Big fan of this channel. Uh, my name is Nick Singh. I was born and brought up in Northern Virginia in the suburbs of Washington, DC. My dad is from Lucknow and my mom is from Bihar. And I went to the University of Virginia where I studied systems engineering and minored in computer science. Wow, it's so amazing. And I have personally not seen even a Harvard or MIT student going to all three top firms all at once. So how did that happen? Can you please share how your university, so your university is University of Virginia. It's like top 30 in the country, not like top 10 Harvard or MIT. So how you got your first internship in your undergrad? Absolutely. My first internship was at a small data science contracting firm and based in Charlottesville, Virginia, called Commonwealth Computer Research Incorporated. I got that job by going to my university's career fair, walking around, trying to talk to everybody who would give me any attention. Most didn't. Most said, you're just a first year, get lost. But luckily, one company, I didn't lead with the fact that I was a first year. I just started talking to them and telling them about an Android app I was working on, and they loved my energy, they loved my passion, so they took a chance on me, and I'm super thankful to them. That's how I got my first internship. The next year, I got my Microsoft internship, similarly, through the career fair, where, again, I got quite lucky that they made an exception for someone young like me because they loved my passion, and they loved the fact that I had one internship already. Google's Nest Labs, that came from an interesting story. In the summer of 2015, while I was interning in Seattle for Microsoft, Google's Nest Labs had an internship open house in Silicon Valley, and they had put a public RSVP form on Facebook. I filled it out even though I couldn't attend. I was in Seattle, this was happening in Silicon Valley. But the recruiter liked my background, and they emailed me saying, hey, we noticed you didn't come to the career fair, to the open house, but do you want to interview with us? I said, absolutely. Suddenly, they didn't say anything after it. So I emailed once, I emailed once more, and then I emailed a third time. And on the third email, they got back to me and said, hey, I appreciate your persistence. I love your passion. Let's actually do the interview now. And that's how I got Google's Nest Labs. Wow. So it's mainly about persistence, like emailing Google again and again, and also like keeping in touch with Microsoft and then finally Facebook. So I have one interesting story to share. So as an international student, I have been told that rather than doing multiple internships in different firms, just like you have been jumping around from Google, Microsoft, Facebook, we are told that do internship in one firm, like two to three times so that it guarantees that they will give you a return full-time offer. But what about your case? Why didn't you consider doing that or and why you chose moving around? Yeah, absolutely. There's definitely some tough thing about being an international student. So luckily I was born and brought up in the US, so I didn't really have any visa issues. That is a fair concern to have. Um, in my own personal experience, I felt confident in my ability to find another job, which really made me prioritize. Uh, getting a wide breadth of experience and learnings over having a guaranteed um, next thing to do. Perfect. So now let's finally compare the culture between all these three firms, Google, Facebook, Microsoft. According to me, I'm just assuming that 
they will not force you to work for more than eight hours. It's your choice. But what's the culture actually there? Yeah, all three are fantastic firms. I found my experience at Seattle uh, with Microsoft to be very fun, but I found the work slightly boring just because it's a very large company. And while there are very many interesting projects going on, I felt like it was a lot harder to maybe find those. And there was a lot more bureaucracy just based on the size and the his and how long that company has been around. Maybe it's my own personal bias, but I'm more interested in smaller companies and companies with a younger, newer culture. And that's actually kind of what really drew me to Facebook. Um, Facebook did have the longest working hours and probably the hardest work culture out of the three companies I noticed. I worked very long hours and quite a few weekends when I worked at Facebook. But I think the culture there, people work a lot because there you can directly see your product go into the hands of billions of people very quickly because it's an app. It's released weekly. If you make a backend change, it's released immediately and or within a few hours. And I think that kind of pace is set. So people work a lot. And same way Mark Zuckerberg's famous for that phrase, move fast and break things. And even when I was there in 2017, many years after I'd been founded, I could still feel that culture of people wanting to move very fast, faster than many uh, large, pretty much faster than any large company I saw, and actually faster than many mid-sized startups. I, it's very impressive, the infrastructure, developer infrastructure, as well as the culture at Facebook that pushes people to ship fast. Google was also a great experience. They have some of the best developer infrastructure um, and some of the most clean, clean code bases I've ever seen. Facebook did not have clean code bases as much because we're moving so fast and have such a bias towards shipping something. So I think Google's like code bases and tools and process was world-class. I had never seen anything like that. Um, but I prefer to maybe do things faster and not the perfect way, which is my own style. And that matched up best with Facebook. Perfect. I got it. So that's also possibly the reason you joined startup because you want to work in a fast paced company and you want to feel the growth that you can provide. And what's the salary, uh, salary differences? Like is salary pretty much same in Google, Facebook, Microsoft? Um, I would say that probably Facebook pays a little bit better than Google and Microsoft. I think some of it also has to do with geographic bias. In general, Silicon Valley is more expensive than Seattle. So Google and Facebook, which are headquartered there, tend to pay more than Microsoft. And then between the two, I, I do think Facebook does pay slightly better than Google. But I think what ultimately matters is the slight differences in pay get made up over time if you just do well. So if you do well at Google or you do well at Facebook, you can make a lot of money. So yeah. Wow. So if you become so a senior software engineer, is 500K a possible figure you can make with stocks and pretty much all the benefits? Absolutely. So um, you have to make your first promotion in the first two years at Facebook. And then you roughly have to make that second promotion again in two years. So if you join as a new grad, almost 90% of them will have two promotions by four years. And that salary being made after four years is in Silicon Valley for Facebook, roughly 350K or so. And if you do one more promotion after a few years like that, it can very well be 450, 500. And if you start managing people, it gets to be 500, 750 million. So there are many, many people making a million dollars a year who might only be 30, 31, 32. And they're not absolute rock stars. Uh, they just manage other managers. Um, so there might, it's not like one or two people. There's probably hundreds of managers who are managing other managers and they take home a million dollars plus. Wow. But why did you quit this like 500K up to 500K or $1 million salary and join the startup? I, I get it. You want to grow. But what was the biggest reason you joined startup by up to quitting Facebook? Absolutely. So I'm just someone who's super hungry to learn about everything. And that includes learning about the business side. So while I had done all these tech internships, deep down, I wanted to learn like what the business side would look like. So I had an opportunity that I got via cold emailing, which we'll talk about soon, where I wrote to the CEO of SafeGraph, 
at that time, it was about 16 people big. And I wrote toward the CEO and said, listen, I don't know marketing, but growth, growth hacking is very similar to marketing. I'm a very smart software engineer. Maybe I can learn the business side. Can I work for you? And he said, sure, come on in. And he took a chance on me. And I had a chance to basically run marketing at the startup for one whole year. And when I joined at 16 people, now the company is 40 people big and we have a three person marketing team and the company is doing fantastic. And I just wanted that opportunity as a 23 year old to go try something else. Because if I had failed and it's okay to fail, that's what they teach in Silicon Valley. It's okay to fail. I would have worked again in software at another big tech company. But if this was the correct thing to do, I should have taken a chance. And that's what I did. And I think I made the right decision. That's so amazing. Now let's move on with some career tips. What are the some uh, cold emailing tips that you would like to give us? Like I have never heard about cold emailing personally. So how to write a perfectly formatted cold email? Absolutely, Herner. So cold emailing is that art of writing to someone you do not know. So if you had been introduced, that's called like a warm introduction. So cold means they don't know you. They've never heard of you. But there's an art to cold emailing, which is how you get their attention and get a response. So actually in the description below, I've linked to eight cold email tips to help you land your dream job, because I think it's something all software engineers and technical people should learn. So specifically, some tips I have for cold emailing is to write a very customized email directly to the person you're trying to get attention of. Usually at a startup, it's okay to write to the CEO. The CEO responds very quickly. His whole day job is basically managing email. And you write to them very precisely, use their name. Don't say dear sir or madam, just say hi, Oren, hi, Bob. You just do three bullet points about who you are and what value you can provide. And by value you provide, I don't mean, oh, I'm a, don't say something generic, oh, I'm a hard worker. Give something very specific. Hey, I have worked here, here. I have this skill and that skill. My side project is this, and it had 1 million users. Can I help your startup do X, Y, and Z? So you not only say who you are, what skills you have, but you very tangibly say, based on these skills, I will help your own company do X, Y, and Z. And you come up with these things in a customized way. So you read what that company does and you write to them. So while it's not easy to do a hundred of these per day, because it takes a little while to write a customized email. If you write it well, you can get a response from almost any startup CEO. People have been able to get a response like this from Jeff Bezos at Amazon. As long as you write it neatly and carefully, and you do a very tangible ask, people will be happy to receive cold emails. Wow, that's so incredible. And now finally, some last resume tips. Can you tell us what are the mistakes that we commonly do in our resume that like stop search or like hinders to reach Google and Facebook, Microsoft? Absolutely. So I also have a guide about that. Uh, 36 resume tips for software engineering resumes. That's linked below. Um, some of the most common mistakes I've seen when I've been reviewing resumes has been that people, again, write very generically instead of focusing on tangible results that they drove. So they would say, oh, I'm a team player, I'm a hard worker. Rather than saying, in a team of four, I made this project, here's the GitHub link. Or, hey, I'm a hard worker, you just say, hey, here's my GPA and here's a side project I work 30 hours a week to do, here's the Google Play link, go download the app. That shows you a very tangible way that you're a hard worker and you've shipped real software. So I think that's one big thing to do. Second is I think that objective or summary section can be absolutely removed. Many people lead with that. I think, again, that's very fluffy to say, oh, I'm this guy, this guy. All that should be able to be understood from your resume. So get rid of that like very generic objective or summary section at the top of a resume. And lastly, I would advise people, I mean, there's so many tips, but I think the other big one is Lead with what makes you look the best. If you went to a not so great university, but you had a very top tier internship, it's okay to put the work experience above the education section. But let's say you went to a very good university, but have never worked anywhere. Then it's very okay to put the education top and then the work experience below. And let's say you have no work experience, and you don't go to a well-known university, 
but you have a very great project that has lots of downloads or lots of users or it's made a lot of money, go lead with that. Even if you're still in university, you don't have to lead with the university section. You lead with what makes you look the best and you make sure that's at the top. Absolutely. So thank you so much. It was a pleasure having you here. I feel personally very inspired. And now every student who is whether going to average university or tier three college can definitely dream to reach Google, Facebook, or any of their top or dream company to work for. So thank you so much, Gonsi. Absolutely, Hernur. Thanks for having me. So if you like this speaker, then I'm pretty sure you will also like the system design and algorithms course by Educative, which has helped a lot of students become software engineers while they were from tier one, two, or three colleges. So definitely check it out and the link will be in the description below.